But um, let's start with Munster. Um, he, he talked there about backing his young players in the Pro 14, and this is a big window for him. Right now, um, if you think back to uh, the previous regime in Leinster, their inability to win games during the Pro 14 was one of the things that did for Matt O'Connor. Bjorn van Grand needs to see these young players step up and they need to play well, and I think there's probably a little bit of hope that they will. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot been said about Munster in the last couple of weeks, I suppose, and um, the run of matches two from eight, and obviously they won yesterday comfortably. It was a, a dreadful match, I think, overall. Um, they showed glimpses of, you know, the positives they can take from the game. Um, a bit of a sombre mood there yesterday, obviously, because of the results on Saturday, and, and everyone was hoping to get to that stage that, you know, maybe they were still in with a shout. But obviously, the the drop goal against Racing and the, giving Saracens the bonus point in the victory in Tolman Park, not taking one themselves over in in, in Alliance Park. Um, came back to haunt him, but I, you know, I did a piece on Saturday in the Indo, and I was, I'm, I think the glass is more half full than half empty because there is some good, promising young players there, and uh, that's the key now is to integrate them, and it's it's that quality, of depth, and experience. Um, some of their under twenties, actually, a good few of them, on when they came back from from Argentina in the summer. Um, would have been integrated probably into to play some Pro 14 games, but a lot of them were injured. And you know, Jack O'Sullivan, Gavin Coombs, Craig Casey came off yes, came off the bench yesterday. Um, Liam Coombs, Dermot Barron. There's there's probably a good number who have been on the under 20s for the last two years, and the previous years they weren't. So he's got to integrate them now because I think my my bugbear is. Um, and it's not, nothing personal against any of the overseas players, but there's a, there's a number of overseas players who are not starters, regular starters, and the impact they're making needs to be bigger. So they're just taking up their their Well, I think now, blockers. you know, obviously in the last couple of years, some of them were, were, um, were project players, and you're not going to get every project player right. They've been very unlucky with Tyler Blandell. I think he showed brilliant promise a couple of years ago. Uh, he's a top, top fella. But it hasn't worked out for him, unfortunately, with his with his injury again. And sometimes that happens, and it's very unfortunate on the player. But I think now, um, you know, Finney Mitchell yesterday, Thomas Ahern is a really good second row, young second row who who played in the A team uh, against Connacht the other day, and um, they've got to be integrated now. And that's probably the key when they come next year, when they've got Damien Dialende and RJ Snyman, two world class players, World Cup winners. It's you got to build young players around them as well. So there's footage during the rounds of um, Snyman taking a, a kick off one-handed and mm. batting off the uh, the locals in um, Japan. Like he looks like he's going to be a great signing for them, but he's also kind of having a year off in Japan. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's um, he's a really good footballer for such a big man, and he br brings that physical prowess that maybe they have lacked a little bit. Um, he probably wouldn't. They're, the, they're the type of they're the type with of, everybody. But they they are the type of players that you need to be bringing in if you're Munster. You can't be bringing in players yeah, who are. So if you're bringing in three or four overseas players, they have to be world class at this stage. And then there's been a period of trying to bring pro, a couple of project players through, and and that's down to financial constraints as well. So I think now the time is ready to try and get five or six of these young players into the squad and have them chomping at the bit to try and get into the European team and and play more Pro 14, so they haven't been good enough, and that's the reality. You can look back at mitigation and injuries, uh, haven't helped. The weather conditions against Saracens, if they wanted to try and play and push a scoreline in that first game in Thoman Park in round three, it was very difficult. Um, you know, inconsistency in selection um, throughout that period from round three and four right through Christmas has, hasn't helped them, the World Cup, all that stuff, but ultimately, there's a there's a there's a depth issue and a quality of depth that um, they need to try and increase. So um, I think you know the players love Stephen Larkham and there is some changes being made there and and he's been really positive with them and so I think overall it's it's um, there should be some cause for optimism. Of course you dissect it and you put because there's a pressure and expectation that that will always be there with Munster now whether it's they like it or not. They're also entering into the next two or three years where they're 
world class players of the last three or four years are probably just heading over their peak with O'Mahony, Stander, Murray, Earls. Those players are coming through. Like, do you see that over the next three or four years they can step into those boots, that they can get to that sort of level? Or they, do Munster need of, to Yeah, some of them have potential. There's there's no point in me naming guys who haven't played and we haven't mm. seen them at that level, but there's there's a number of guys that potentially can. But that just feels um, like you're, if they're sort of, I don't want to say going off a cliff, but just on, heading on the way down. The succession plan is much better. When, when, when I vented my frustration in 2016 about Munster, I didn't see that these, this group of players that are coming through. There's still issues around tight head. There's issues around centres, um, even with this group of young players that are coming through. So... It's just the way it is, but I think there's more optim cause for optimism with some of these players. And as you say, it's a very relevant point. The next two to three years, Conor Murray, Stander, Mahoney, Earls, these guys, um, you know, they're going to be coming to, to, to the end of their careers. So it's about developing them and, and hoping that some of those guys can come through. And, you know, if Snayman and, and, and Dialinde come in next year and, and they add value and make them more competitive in Europe, well, it's much better for younger players to learn from them and, and, and develop and get time in the Pro 14. So, going back to what you said at the start, Jerry, it's about bringing these players through, giving them game time. You saw Craig Casey coming off the bench yesterday. He's a really, really exciting prospect. Um, let's talk about Conor Murray. You gave him man of the match. Um, does this get him into, into the Ireland team? And also, I, don't, I don't know. Um, who and, he took a bit and, of a bang. You know, so I suppose some people would question... Um, uh, that Stander could have got it. He scored two tries. He was um, um, played really well yesterday. Jack O'Donoghue, who has been probably Munster's most consistent players, was superb again. Playing seven. Playing seven, yeah. Is and he a seven? Is that now? Is um, that are they just going to say right? You're seven because where's he getting in the? Is, you know, not getting in ahead of yeah. any player. He might. I like. Who knows? Who knows? But I think he's he's he really. Six? He's a six, seven, and an eight all into that's no one. Good. That's good. Like, yeah. um, that's where you become the. If you're the, his agent. You're like here, like pick it, pick a spot. Ah, in modern like, rugby, is that not exactly what you want to be? Because spots will always appear. Yeah, and you, you get picked in the squad all the time. It, it sometimes can affect you if 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 you want to try and get into the starting team. But I think his his consistency has been brilliant, and um, and he's been rewarded by being brought into the Irish squad. Um, but I thought Conor Murray was superb. I thought um, his passing was really crisp. He made a lot of line breaks. Uh, huge number of tackles again, and um, I, I, that's why I gave it to him. I wasn't there was no thought process around getting him in the team. Uh, getting him you in weren't the doing Irish your best. <laughs> no, because I think John Cooney still is the front runner, and and um, it's nothing to do with that. I based it on what I saw there yesterday. It was also Ospreys. Um, yeah, it was Ospreys, but I don't. And I, look, Conor Murray hasn't been as as poor as people are suggesting he hasn't he's been behind a beaten pack at times and a, a disjointed pack and a team with lots of changes um he hasn't been he's brilliant best uh, but that a half back can't be brilliant on 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 less the 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 pack in front of him are playing well and there's been so much change around that monster pack throughout that period i'm talking about so you know, based on what I saw yesterday, I thought he was he was superb. All right, uh, let's talk about Saracens. Hands up, I did not expect the relegation. I thought that they were going to find some way to fudge it because Saracens is such a big brand and so important to English rugby and they've been so successful. But fair play, they've actually properly meted out a punishment for now that is um, what it should be. They should be relegated. They should probably have all their titles taken away from them as well. But we can come back to that some other time. Um, are there any of those players playing at Saracens that any of the Irish team should be interested in or do you just expect them all to pick up, be picked up by English and French I'm not clubs? sure. I think um, the, it's, it's the only way you can pick them up really now is Irish qualified guys. Uh, Matt Gallagher, son of John Gallagher, has, has been linked with, with Munster anyway. Um, he's Irish qualified. Uh, but any of their top internationals are going to be paying top dollar for them so I don't know if that will, right. that yeah. will happen. Um, so where do they go? Like France is presumably the only option because like Stephen Jones had an article yesterday which you would disagree with ninety percent of it where you know he almost gave that line of well look you know nobody's ever scored a goal because they took drugs this sort of thing that just because they had all this extra money they still had the they still would have got there because of the culture that's within the club but he was making the point that so at the start of the season they need to reduce the salary cap they look around to the other teams in the Premiership and say do you want to take any of these players but because they're so close to the salary cap. And as you say, their wages are so high, 
they can't take them, if the Irish clubs can't afford them, like, is France the only option? Pro probably, yeah, and I think it's, 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 a, it's a crazy story, isn't it? And, um, you know, Leinster play them in the quarter-final now, they don't get a good reward for top, being top seeds, it's going to be incredibly difficult, even more so now because they can play a lot of the youngsters and the rest of the Premiership, it doesn't matter, and they can uh, manage the, the, the time for the internationals and they can target Europe. Um, but it's, it's a really messed up situation and I think yeah. I saw an apology somewhere for the yeah. first time over yeah. the weekend in one of the papers. Um, I think Leinster are going to kill them, to be honest. At this stage, I, it's a chance for revenge. It's also a stage of the season where those Saracens, some of them will have, be looking for new contracts. Well, they're, sorry, they'll all be looking for new contracts. Are you going to go and try and die for that Saracens team? When you are like a month away from signing for a new team, will you not be like? Will you not be? Will several of those players not be making business decisions? Yeah, maybe. When a tackle is maybe, there to yeah. be made, it's it like, depends what shape they're in after the inter and after the internationals. But they would not like nothing more than to to turn Leinster over in the quarter final and win Europe and kind of give the two fingers to everyone else in the Premiership and any of the critics. So they're a very dangerous prospect and if they if they have <coughs> they can play everyone now in Europe, you know, their whole squad that they have. Um, so it's it's um yeah, Leinster have got to take it to a place where it comes down to desire and, and passion and and who sees themselves at the, uh, at the club. Because even going down to the championship they still have got to adhere to Salary cap there. Salary cap there, same salary cap. So ultimately, they've got to offload players at the end of the season, and it just depends what shape they're in. Yeah. Oh, you're having a grand though, and he's a, you know, he doesn't want to talk about it, fair enough, as a coach. But like, this has affected Munster. The like, Saracens cheated their way to winning the English title, enables them in Europe then to be able to rotate their squad in a way other teams aren't because of the depth they've been able to put in place, which affects every single team. So they're not going to be thrown out of the Champions Cup because there is no salary cap. Yeah. But the reason they're in such a strong position in the Champions Cup the reason is they're because in, they're cheating. The, the reason they're in Europe is because, well, look, who, says, who, who knows if they stayed in the salary cap bracket, they probably still would be in Europe. You've top six in England, who knows? But well, if you look at the four the players that had the deals, if you now, if you were to take those four players out, there's no way they're the best. Yeah, team well, in maybe yeah. And if they didn't have them last year or the year before or a couple of years ago, those two semi-finals, Munster lost. Who knows? Mm. But um, it, it's just amazing. I find it very difficult that mistakes have been made and errors around administration and paperwork. But blah, blah, blah. if you go to your accountant as yeah. a sole trader and you say, "Do my tax return," um, his job is to highlight potential. Um, risks if there, if you're pushing the boundaries with your expenses or whatever and you he then gives you information to say look we'll put this in but if it goes awry you have an argument to, to have with revenue or whatever it's the same scenario Saracens would have been told look this is dodgy dodgy they've yeah. taken a chance in this they've taken a risk to push the boundaries with those those deals with the players, those co-investments. So salary cap is a really good thing. Teams who break salary caps deserve to be punished, and it, it fixes it what, fixes the league. It makes it unbelievably what competitive. What frustrates me the most, and I think there's no, I think the findings of this of how much over the salary cap they've been, they've taken relegation here, obviously, because um, I think it'll be more damaging if the findings and and they're they're fully audited, if that all comes out, because who knows? They're obviously have stuff to hide, so they've taken the relegation. But I think it should come out. It should be made public for the good of rugby going forward, and that um, this shouldn't happen again. We're nearly out of time here. We're completely out of time. But uh, Leinster did play Deegan and Doris in the same back yeah, row. Interesting I, to see. When I like... saw the team and um, the other day, I thought maybe that's an Andy Farrell conversation with Leo Cullen to see Max Deegan as a six and Doris and how they play together. And Stuart Lancaster said in an interview of Five Live that he expects Ireland to play a bit more like Leinster, not exactly the same, some changes, but that's good, right? It is, yeah. I think not, you, you just have to be careful. We, we need to see something different, Ger, and hopefully we will in the next few weeks, but sometimes the Six Nations can be pragmatic as well and you, you need a good kick in game and you need to play in the right areas because it's more or less cup rugby. Yeah, all right, good stuff, Alan. Thanks a million. Four minutes past eight this morning here, this Monday morning.